Hello, my name is Aaron Warnock, and I'm a math faculty advisor for Pearson. Today I wanted to spend a few minutes showing you some of the great tools that my lab has for visualizing calculus. We're going to take a look at the conceptual question library, some setup and solves, interactive figures, and some GeoGebra exercises that are coming soon. As a math faculty for the last 18 years, I've worked with quite a few different homework systems, and I'm really pleased to share the excellent resources available in my lab. Pearson's calculus courses now have this really great conceptual question library available. Each chapter has its own section of conceptual questions, anywhere from 30 to 50 or 60 questions per chapter. Generally, I'm not a big fan of multiple choice, but I found many of these to be very well written and great conceptual checks for students. I'm just going to show a few examples. Here we have the classic of sine x over x, limit as x goes to zero, and the fact that that equals one, and what does it mean? And several different options, I'm not going to discuss them all, but you can pause and take a look. I love this one because I assume most students would answer midpoints, but really if the function is not consistently increasing or decreasing, there's no guarantee that midpoints would be the best. Here, of course, drives home the idea that the limit as n goes to infinity means that the position of the xi star in each interval is irrelevant. I especially like this one because it is a many choice. They can select all that are true. And the only thing that we know about this for sure is that the integral is a number. You can even have a nice class discussion about why b is not true. One last exciting piece about the conceptual question library is that they have been loaded into learning catalytics for you, which is one of my very favorite tools for teaching math. If you go to the question library, filter to discipline calculus, and search for the word conceptual, you will see 275 questions listed here. I'm also going to add the filter lim for limits. Just to show you, here's the sign question that I started the video with. The next type of question that I'd like to show off are these setup and solve questions. In calculus, I'm always stressing to my students that the work that they're doing is just as important as the answer they're giving. So there are these question types called setup and solve where the students actually have to fill in intermediate steps as part of the process. And I want to just show you a few of those. Here we've got a L'Hopital's rule where they have to actually show the derivatives of the numerator and denominator before calculating their final answer. Here's a u substitution. And while I'm not a big fan of multiple choice, this actually is all the different options that students would give me if I were to ask them in class. So they have to select the best choice for u, and then actually write the translation of x's into u's, and then of course the final integration, resubstituting the x's back in. For integration by parts, what is that first u dv minus integral v du? Setting up that important step. And then we have the library of interactive figures. There are whole other videos on the great interactive figures for both Briggs and Thomas, but if you go to the video resource library or multimedia library, you can search for interactive figures and you will find hundreds of them that are fantastic for teaching in a synchronous class. What I'm going to focus on right now are the assignable exercises using interactive figures. As a quick heads up, these are being loaded into the media update that uses the cloud-based Wolfram eText, but for the moment they are still requiring the CDF download. Students can launch these interactive figures and really deal with some visualization of the calculus we're working on. Here the question is asked them to find where the function f is decreasing. And they can use the interactive tool to see it being traced out, decide whether or not to view f prime in the process, and really start to hopefully understand that visualization and not just looking at a function on paper. And of course we can't finish without showing off the incredible 3D imagery in these interactive figures. In this particular case, the students are asked to find the set of all values where the plane z equals z naught intersect in an ellipse. So take the z naught plane and adjust it up and down to see where we are going to create ellipses. So it looks like everything greater than 4 and less than negative 4. There are many of these. This is just one particular one I chose to show. That would be absolute value of z naught greater than 4. The last thing I'd like to share with you is some really exciting GeoGebra exercises that are coming very soon. They're currently being built. There are 150 of them coming. I'm about to show you some prototypes and just want to run through a few of them. Here we're trying to find the points on the curve for f prime. Of course, we could easily just select those where the derivative is 0. But let's be a little bit trickier and see if maybe it looks like the slope is about 1 right there. Hit check answer. Any points that the students select along that blue line will be marked as correct. This is an incredibly involved question dealing with the mean value theorem. 
As we can see, the slope from 0 to 6 is going to be positive, and there are going to be a, two points here. The students can actually adjust the values to make the problem a little easier if they want. For example, I could add in a 2 and a 4 here, and then use A to be 1 fourth to give myself some simpler numbers to work with possibly. But they're also given multiple options for how many parallel lines there will be. This one only has two. This actually takes quite a bit of finding the derivative of f of x and then solving that derivative equal to f prime of p. And I actually tried this, got a couple of different points, and it worked. Very cool question. For some of these, the students actually get to choose the components that they want to work with. So here we've got trig, exponential, and logarithms, all a little bit challenging. And then, of course, a polynomial. And finding the area between two curves is the integral of the subtraction. There are quite a few just conceptual questions as well on those 150, including things like here we have the squeeze theorem. So what are the two functions that will squeeze this as x goes to infinity? I took the liberty of working these out ahead of time. Hopefully we're right. Yes, we are. Fantastic. So again, some great conceptual questions coming too. I hope this overview of question types available in my lab for teaching calculus has you as excited as I am.